So hello everyone. Before we start this wonderful session with Lillian Gamello, let me give you a small introduction of her. Although like many of us might be knowing her already, but for those who don't, she's a professional statue as she can hold a pose from like, I guess from one minute to three hours, which itself is commendable. Her stillness and passion for art has led to work, uh, led to her to work with great painters, animators, sculptors, concept artists, illustrators, and art students. She's popularly known for her live drawing sessions on Instagram Live and Zoom as um, the pandemic cut off the real world session. As elegant and sophisticated she seems, her jokes and giggles in between the poses are what makes the sessions enjoyable and as well as interesting. So thank you for being here. Thanks for inviting and, me. Yeah. <laughs> and like a gentle reminder to all, we are here for a casual conversation with her. So feel free to ask her questions, no matter how silly they are. With this, I'd like to, I'd like Lillian to take over. Thanks, Treya. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, a lot of you may know me. Some of you may not know me. Um, do you want to like pin my video or something to that? Uh, Can all of you see me? All right. Okay. Um, so my name is Lillian. I'm half Indian and half Filipino. So that explains my accent. I was born and raised in Oman. And I lived there till I was about 17. And then I grew up in a small town. So I just kind of got bored and decided to move out and move to India. And um, how it started, the art modeling, um, it goes back to my childhood. I was raised with two brothers, two elder brothers, and they always played a lot of video games. So, you know, like as a little sister, obviously I didn't get to directly play the video games, they would maybe give me a dead controller or something like that, or maybe just sit and watch. I was exposed to a lot of animation and artworks, digital artworks. And I grew a fascination for that. And as I grew older, um, there was this thing like uh, with the Southeast Asian culture, like when you're mixed blooded, like half and half, they expect you to be a model or an actress or Miss Universe, Miss Philippines, you know, that kind of thing. But for me, it didn't make sense because I don't look either Filipino or Indian, like I'm in the middle. So it didn't make sense to represent either of the countries. And it's also just kind of dumb, like spending a lot of money just to prove that you're humble in the end. Um, but people still kept emphasizing on my looks growing up and not a lot on my brains so I didn't really get to develop it as much as I wanted to um, I did however end up getting a degree in psychology English and journalism some sort of triple major degree and then I worked as a creative copywriter um, around that same time like since I was working in advertising I thought like why not give it a shot working on the other side of the camera like um, I did a lot of hobby modeling during my teenage years, I would model for hobbyist photographers, but not like seriously because it's just like, okay, I have a pretty face, let me just like earn some pocket money on the side. Uh, so when I got into advertising, I did a few digital ads for Britannia and Tanishq. And then I also like starred in a Bollywood film, two Bollywood, two Bollywood films actually. One was Shakila's biopic, it was a flop. And the second one, it's uh, due to release next month on Netflix. It's called The Fallen. But I did get to share the screen with uh, Richard Chada and what's that guy's name? I forgot his name. <laughs> Tripathi? Pankaj Tripathi. Pankaj Tripathi, yeah, that guy. <laughs> uh -oh. So that was, pretty, that was pretty cool. And I got to see like behind the scenes and everything. But that creative satisfaction wasn't there like yeah it was cool like you know you're on screen with these big stars but like what quality like what kind of work was I producing um, I have an ad blocker on my laptop so I don't see this shit and then I end up starting in these ads like what's the point um so I was like looking for something more meaningful with what I could do with what I have and so um 
sometime around 2018, like my final year of college, uh, around the same time when I got into this modeling thing, I was rejected from several agencies and auditions because they said like, you know, you're fat, you're short. Like, okay, fine, I will lose weight. I'll get fit and slim. What can I do about my height? You know, I can't change that. I mean, this is how I'm born. And this is how a lot of Indian women look like, or Asian women in general, we are short. So it didn't make sense, like, you know, to be a part of an industry that was obsessed with Eurocentric features. Like they literally get models from Europe and Russia to wear our kurtas and zaris and use it on these e-commerce platforms. Um, so yeah, in the pursuit of looking for something more meaningful, um, I was part of this um, art ho group on Facebook, like ho, H-O-E. And a lot of artists, like amateur artists would share their favorite paintings and animations and stuff in the group. And it was just nice. Like I could feel connected to these artworks, especially the models that I saw in these artworks because my body type is like the woman in the artworks and the paintings. And you don't call them fat, you don't call them obese or overweight or, you know, pick up their flaws. You admire them, you praise how the artist captured the essence, the beauty of the woman in these paintings. And it made me wonder like, you know, is it possible to get a career in this field? Because the only thing we saw about this growing up, like it was in the scene Titanic. I mean, in the movie Titanic, where they had the scene where Jack draws Rose, like draw me like one of your French girls. So what is a French girl? Like, what does she do? <laughs> uh, can you be an Indian girl? Um, so I looked, I looked it up and turns out it is an actual thing to be an art model. And I asked for advice in the group, the art ho group. And I told them like, guys, it's gonna sound insane, but I want to be an art ho, like the art ho, the woman in the painting. And I received a lot of nice advice from people like, cause it was an international group. So a lot of artists in America, they told me like start out with uh, an art school if possible, because that's one of the safest places you can begin with. And so I just looked up like art schools near me. And to my luck, there was an animation school 500 meters from my house here in Bangalore. And then I sent them an email like, hey, uh, do you happen to be looking for an art model? And, you know, I'd like to give it a shot. And they were thrilled to have me reach out to them because they were hunting for, her, for art models. They even tried posting in the newspapers. But it seems kind of fishy, you know, like we need someone to post nude for three hours. Mm. You know, it's not something you see every day. The but, prayers got answered. Uh, oh, wait. The prayers got answered. So, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I went there. And to give you a little background of how I was back then, I would say I was a bit conservative in the way I dressed and lived. Um, I wasn't someone who was comfortable showing a lot of skin because I grew up in a Christian household and that too in Oman, that's another Islamic country. So, you know, showing skin was a taboo or like, you know, show that you had bad character. And so for me to take this up was kind of brave, but I wouldn't say rebellious. I didn't want to do it because, you know, fuck the society, let me be who I want to be and like show my boobies or something like that. It wasn't like that. I went on stage, I mean, on the platform at the art school. I undressed and it felt so natural and true. Like at that moment, I felt like I was my true self. I did not have any awkwardness or nervousness. Um, it went really smooth and like I modeled for three hours for a shot. And I'm a pretty still person. I'm a very patient person. So I think that also helped. So um, modeling for these artists, it gave me like, you know, a new perspective to life. Like, you know, like this whole other world 
awaiting for me. So yeah, I just started modeling more and more. And it was like a weekend thing because I was still in college. I would model every Saturday or Sunday. Like Saturday would be the animation students classes. So that would be clothed. And on Sunday, it was like open for everyone that was nude. And so I would meet artists beyond the animation school. And it just went uphill from there. Of course, like it wasn't always uphill, especially when it came to personal life, because it is unconventional what I do. Not a lot of people will understand it. Not a lot of people understand art. Even for artists to draw nude figures or even the female form is scandalous. So I did face a lot of trouble with my family, but I held on to it because this is something that I found myself and I put my heart into and it's worth it because I know what I'm doing is not wrong. It's different, but it's not wrong. It's not illegal. So this is like my true calling. And now I've been modeling for artists all around the world. So it was a weekend thing, remember I told you, it was like a every Saturday, Sunday thing. So when the pandemic hit, I felt restless, like on the weekends, because it's like, okay, so I don't have to go to an art school or Cabin Park to pose, now what? And I saw like a lot of people randomly going online on Instagram Live. And I thought like, maybe I can go online and give you guys references. So that's how the life drawing on Instagram started. I had no idea how it would turn out like, because you know, you never know what the other person is doing on the other side of the screen. They could be wanking for all you know. <laughs> but thankfully everyone's been quite respectful and I've had no bad incidents. If anything, people were like super kind and respectful and thankful for what I've contributed during the pandemic. I managed to grow my Instagram from like thousand followers now with zero paid advertising that's all and the trajectory of my career right now it's like um so now it's been like kind of casual on the instagram and now slowly moving towards twitch and youtube i'd eventually like to build a library of references because i know that it can be expensive to buy references and also that we don't have enough representation of indian or asian women in the art scene and also like gestures and you know body movements like you know the Indian nod and the hand gestures you don't get those references in the west um, I'm also aiming towards uh, motion capture some of you may have seen that I did animation breakdowns on my Instagram live where I would like take a sequence of like turn it around like with a sword and like I would break it down to like 10 different movements and like two or three minutes each. It is quite painful doing that, but it's really fun. I enjoy doing that. So I thought like, how could I possibly explore this more? And someone recommended you should try motion capture. So yeah, that's where I'm heading, I guess. And I'd like to show you guys some of the artworks in case you guys don't follow me on Instagram already. Um, I'll be sharing my screen now. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go to the start. So initially it was like I was like giving my shot at the modeling thing. As you can see, it was not high fashion. It's kind of um, indie. I, always, I worked with a lot of indie photographers, film photographers. And it, I was still doing the art modeling thing. I was just like hesitant to put it up on my Instagram because of how people would perceive it. And I also wanted to keep track of, you know, who's watching my stories. So I would only post it on my stories. But when the pandemic hit, there was this artist. Ariel Colon, he's a Puerto Rican artist. And he told me that I resemble the Native American woman and he wanted to have me 
uh, part of a series. So I, he gave me like a rough sketch and then he asked me to recreate the photograph and then we started sketching. And this piece is called Put Your Heart on a Plate. And this is the first artwork that I put on my profile. And it's exactly what I promised to do, put my heart on a plate and be honest about my work. And since then I've been posting artworks and doing the Instagram sessions. So this is like, I think, this is, this is also like a Saturday, Sunday thing. This is an animation thing. Um, wait, let me like play one of the videos. So. So it can be like awkward because I'm just like staying still. But I sometimes have the comments on and I interact with the people. So it feels like we are working together. And nice and interactive. This is one of my favorite artworks that was created from the Zoom sessions. So you can see like there are like 20 poses in this. And this artist, Nikhil Shinde. From Maharashtra. This is an oil painting I coordinated with an artist in Gujarat, Shubhamba Viskar. This was by a face time. And like we had to adjust the candles everywhere to get the perfect lighting and pose. Then took a screenshot and then painting. But some people like they asked me to hold the pose, like even though it's difficult. But this guy was like, just take a screenshot, it's fine. And I met this amazing artist. I think he's in Hawaii, but he's a Filipino artist. And the way he translates, this is, this is from a photograph, but the way he translated the work is incredible. It's like literally copy paste. The amount of detailing that went into this was amazing. And then there are a lot of illustrations created from my sessions. So there's a lot of different styles. So it's not about, you know, oh, do I look cute in this pose? Or do I look pretty? It's not about me, actually. It's more about the artist's vision and how I can help bring it to life. This one was a painting uh, done over Zoom. This was, uh, I think, 12 hours in total, three hours each. And the artist was in Maryland, USA. So I would wake up at seven or eight in the morning here and it would be like 10 in the night for him. And then we would work together. This is also a brilliant painting by the same artist, Nikhil Shinde. Some sketches by Robert Ride in the US. So if you see my highlights, like you can go back all the way to the start. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to show you this event that happened in 2019. It was one of the best graphics. Um, I was invited by PC Vikram. Some of you may know him uh, to be the official model. So I was a model for the clay garden that they sculpted me and also for the sketch, sketch garden. I don't know what that was called, but yeah. There were hundreds or I don't know, close to thousands of artists at the event. And it did feel a little intimidating having a lot of eyes on you, a lot of cameras. But then when I saw the stories that were posted from this, I was blown away, like, wow. So artists, when they view you, they view you from a different eye. They don't objectify you. They don't um, sexualize you. I mean, at least the respectful, genuine artists. There are erotic artists. That's a different field that I don't want to indulge in. But the artists that I work with are very respectful. And you can see it in the work. So even though I was wearing like this bikini bra, um, they did not like, you know, draw me like a hot babe or someone like that. They captured me quite respectfully. Um, now on to the live sessions. So uh, when I first started, it was like just something rough. Like I had no idea what the theme was gonna be. 
Um, a lot of my themes are usually action oriented. I love Frank Frazetta's work. So you can see that influence a bit. And then like I tried to do the classical sessions, the nude ones, but at first I wasn't very confident of going completely nude because yeah, as I said, you know, you never know what the other person's doing. But then I saw these artworks and like, you know, there's no time to do anything else. So that's when I felt more confident to, you know, that I can be my true self on Zoom. This one was an oriental thing. I wore the Filipino dress and pose. So you can see there are like artists from all different skill sets and levels and industries. This was called Pandemic at the Disco. This was fun. And this was like a classical session, the nude one that I did for the first time. And it was attended by a lot of uh, famous artists, I would say. We have Somnath Pal here. Gijesh. Priyankar was there. Vijay Macha. This one was an Instagram live. So some of these videos were not saved onto my IGTV because it was not a feature then. But you can still see the artworks. Oh, uh, someone was painting me like, uh, I don't have the artwork yet, but it will be out soon. So this one is a Shurgil, Amrita Shurgil inspired session. This was a long pool. I think this was two hours long. This was a mixed anatomy session. Portrait. This was Instagram Live. This is like a mermaid thing. Portrait. This was like uh, influenced by the Bharatanatyam dance, the gestures. This was done in collaboration with a uh, life drawing group in the UK. This is the animation thing that I did. It's really cool to see it come together. This was with another lecturing group in the UK. So yeah, like you'll see like there are so many different, they did uh, Rapunzel inspired Aphrodite and Indian sculptures. This one was one of my favorite themes. I visited Humpy a couple of years ago and I loved the, the, the temples and the sculptures that you had over there. So I took some of the poses and tried to translate that into my session. So you can see like how the same poses are translated into different styles. By different artists. There, are, there was also this one really cool cyberpunk theme that I did. Wait, hold on. That was one of my favorites too. Yeah. So I used like gel lighting. So some captured me in color, some in just monotones. This dude is really cool, Aditya. You can see some processes as well. So yeah, that's a glimpse into my work. Let me come back. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing that. Um, there's a lot more that you can see on my highlights. And even when you go to my tagged photos, you'll see more there. So yeah, that's about it. And now on to the questions. Are you guys still there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everyone is here. So uh, basically, like uh, last year when I was taking classes of these students, so uh, in the classroom it happens that you know when 
you're teaching anatomy and uh, you know uh, when you're doing this modeling thing so i have to uh, mm-hmm. take like you know uh, each and every student should pose like for 2 3 minutes oh. and different poses on on table wherever possible and because of the covid we couldn't do that uh, because the classes were also online and thankfully again with some reference i saw your uh, portfolio like this profile and then immediately i started you know telling people like you know my all, all my students that you know you should go and watch her videos or whenever she is doing live so whenever the notification came to me about your live session i uh, passed it on that information to students so uh, oh. some of them have uh, actually drawn you uh, shreya has also okay. uh, attended your uh, live sessions and she has okay. drawn so uh, it's i think it's like you know uh, i think uh, uh, in that way you are doing a like a really great job uh, doing it for artists and being online so the reach is wide because you know it first hand because you are doing it but for us also it is yes. like uh, helpful uh, you know to um, uh, get different poses and different attires uh, so you know it's like a good study uh, for yes. everyone so thanks for that Thank so oh uh, yeah so everyone please uh, start your cameras and you can ask questions to lilian uh, can i ask hmm? go ahead uh, like for the first time you must have been a bit intimidated like doing uh, modeling or art modeling if i say yeah because uh, first of all like in your modeling is always like unconventional like not many do it and then into that uh, art modeling is like it's really unconventional so were you intimidated a bit um so i was like comfortable being in front of the camera already well, of course it's a different thing being in front of a person being in front of the human eye uh but i did feel like you know like as i told you the artists don't view you the same way yeah. as other people do so i didn't really feel worried like you know like oh i um, i forgot to shave i'm hairy or something like that you know my skin is patchy or my scars are there like i didn't really feel any of that Oh, that's really bold. Oh, that's Priyan. I wanted to ask you a question. That uh, how did your parents react? Like when you said you wanted to art modeling, so were they okay with it or not? Oh, 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 oh. you know how you know how Asian parents are. <laughs> it was like World War Three at home. First, they were like, "What is art modeling? Who do you think you are?" And Yeah, it was very, 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 very difficult until this day. This you no know, peace. Um, as I said, like you know, people will not not everyone will understand it, and it's okay. And I'm not being rebellious about it, so that's that. Um, their reaction was a lot of shock because it's nude, you know, like seeing their daughter nude. Of course, they will feel something odd. and especially when we don't come from an artistic background like we come from a very humble background my dad was a driver and my mom was a housemaid and now they just run a private business abroad so they tell they told me like you know we don't do this sort of thing in our family and you know this thing is not for us then i was like then for whom is it like who decides that and i try to tell them you know it's not wrong i know it's weird but you don't have to see it you know and it's safe i know what i'm doing and you don't have to feel worried about me because another thing that they were scared about was my safety because to be vulnerable in front of artists especially men can be dangerous so that was something that they were concerned about um it did, it did take a lot of energy to try and convince them i did not end up convincing them it's just like uh radio silence right now but maybe some day when you know when they see how much i can earn <laughs> they will change their mind <laughs> but 
yeah until then it, it's it's a bit sad because you know i'm achieving so much and i wish that my parents can tell me that they're proud of me but there's no one there but i guess uh, that they will come soon when they will be proud of you and they will see it i hope so yeah. i hope they can see the artists that i'm working with like there are people who you may know like um tilda swinton's husband he's an artist sandra cop he started following me and wanted to paint me Daniel Maidman he's a really amazing figurative artist. Ah uh, Kalyan he goes by the Instagram handle and then Kalyan he wants to do an oil painting on me. Um and Ruchi I forgot her last name. She's a sculptor from Florence Academy of Arts. She wants to make a sculpture of me. So there's a lot of amazing things happening. Hopefully one day they'll see it. Yeah, but it's hard to explain. Oh, I I have a question. Like, if you wouldn't be doing art modeling, what other option would you have? Like, what would be the second best? Um, I've always had a thing with um children. Like, I was a babysitter in my teenage years, so I felt comfortable being around them and like raising them of sorts. And I was really inspired by my. teacher in high school in middle school she she taught the subject called model science and it was the subject that taught us everything else that was not co- covered in other subjects like how to tie your shoelaces and you know how to help around the house stuff like that how to be kind so i was like oh that's really nice and i think that really sculpted me as a person and i thought like maybe i can do student counseling or something like that because i studied psychology and i really like the subject so maybe something in that field yeah uh, the artist completes his work and he shows it to you other than appreciating but like you know uh what do you feel like you know uh, what i don't know how to put it in words but you know what is your reaction uh, to it so most of the times i see the pro- the progress like the work in progress and then like they just cut me off for a few days and then they show me the final piece okay so right from the start like when they start drawing like the fact that i have the power to inspire someone to pick up a brush or a pen or a pencil and make them draw that itself is moving to me mm-hmm. and then seeing their vision of me on their canvas you know i was like oh i didn't even notice that my hair went that way i didn't notice like this the light on my skin fell that way and then seeing their interpretation of that on their canvas is amazing um i know that people may think that i may be feeling numb towards seeing a lot of artworks of me no like you know like even when i saw this scribble by this 6 year old kid whose brother was drawing me on instagram like that fascinated me just as much as a masterpiece so mm-hmm. i really appreciate every single artwork created with my reference okay so uh, and like what are your plans like how we want to take it forward uh, to reach more people or do you have anything in like um i'm still kind of living in fear so i made my instagram account private so my my reach is kind of limited now but it's good in one way so that i can filter who gets to follow me and who i can kick out um uh, but i hope to like go fully public with my work in the next few months and set up a patreon or a youtube i'm trying to keep most of my work as accessible and as free as possible because not everyone can afford references and stuff especially mm-hmm. with the pandemic still affecting us so i hope to tie up with art schools and design studios animation studios and uh commit at least a day or two every week for these mm-hmm. schools and yeah just take it from there and crowd fund perhaps for my uh motion capture suit that's like some 2 lakhs I don't have that right now and I also need a new laptop and camera to like upgrade my 
streaming so it's okay i a lot of people are already happy with my iphone doing all the job but i think it's great really slowly yeah. you know people are here to practice lane so are you into uh, cosplay and um i did try so there's this cosplay artist who takes commissions for creating props and costumes because i don't know how to start and i wanted some frank frazetta inspired costumes and weapons and he was like you need 15k cost gosh it's expensive <laughs> so i don't know how it's going to work out for cosplay like maybe when like i'm there and i can afford it i'll do it but now it's going to be really hard because see this instagram live session somebody sends me 100 rupees 200 rupees that's it i don't really earn anything from these sessions mm. so it's just like my passion towards that the community the feeling of the community, community of you guys coming together and like feeling good for an hour or two and drawing together that's what keeps me going but money wise cosplay will not work out right now perhaps in the future maybe comic con will start sponsoring me ah uh, just anyone in the room <laughs> yes please <laughs> uh, so yeah so i think uh, it was good great talking to you yeah and, it's nice uh, talking to you guys and also knowing the story or uh, whatever uh, like the hardships that you faced and taboos that we all have not just yeah. uh, in the asian countries uh, that we are like you know, a bit closed in our shell yeah so so another thing like i didn't address because nobody asked about so i'm not a nudist i am not into that yeah, yeah. i'm not into flashing or what nonsense people do it's hard for me to understand like i am supposed to call it nonsense i mean for some people it's their lifestyle but i still find it hard to you know even accept and understand erotic art because i feel i feel scandalized seeing that just by me being an art model mm-hmm. and i feel like you know like sometimes uh, erotic artists message me and like they ask can they draw me they will, they don't want to draw me like up close and personal they just want to draw my figure but then i tell them no thank you because their fan base is different so when my work gets muddled with that it turns into something else yeah so yeah like there's a lot of learning and unlearning to do in this field just keeping an open mind will help you go far yeah so there are many roads but you are taking the road that you want to go on yeah cool cool so thanks for your time and thank you for coming and thank you for the nice story so maybe like we'll do uh, i would like to do a session maybe like with some students where we yeah sure uh, sketch you definitely uh where's your studio based in pune pune okay okay yeah uh, i wanted yeah. to come to maharashtra but you know yeah you're welcome thing. but maybe covid the third yeah. and fourth and fifth i don't know when it will stop <laughs> <laughs> so once everything settles down you come to pune Yeah, definitely. We'll That would be awesome. Cool. Thank you. I'll end the show. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who attended, even though there are like five of you. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you.